in the northern suburbs of Beijing, the capital city of China, lies an area of imperial cemeteries of the Ming Dynasty. Thirteen emperors were buried here. Changling is the first and the largest of them. The tomb's owner is Zhu Di, the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty, who overthrew his nephew and ascended the throne. This is the story of this legendary emperor and his magnificent mausoleum. At the foot of the mountain, about 50 kilometers away from the center of Beijing, there is a complex of imperial mausoleums of the Ming Dynasty, where 13 of the 16 emperors of the Ming Dynasty were buried. The 13 tombs are spread over a vast area and span more than 200 years. The tomb complex starts from the main entrance, passes by the stone statues and the sacred road, and then leads to each mausoleum. We've covered this part of the buildings in the previous series, and I'll leave the link in the description. Our video today starts directly from the mausoleum area. This three-arched building is the main entrance of the mausoleum. The big doorway in the middle was where the emperor's coffin passed through. Later emperors and officials of the Ming Dynasty would pass through the smaller doorways on both sides when they came to worship. Zhu Di was the fourth son of Zhu Yuanzhang, the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. When the Ming Dynasty was founded in 1368, the capital was Nanjing. At that time, Beijing was the border area between the Ming Dynasty and the nomads in the north. After Zhu Di grew up, he guarded Beijing as a military general and became the king there. Many of Zhu Yuanzhang's sons were also sent to guard other border areas. Inside the gate is the first courtyard. There is a steely pavilion on the right. This pavilion was built during the Jiajing period, the 11th emperor of the Ming Dynasty. After Emperor Jiajing ascended the throne, he ordered the construction of steles and pavilions in front of every tomb of previous Ming Dynasty emperors. These steles were supposed to record the lifetime achievements of these emperors, but Emperor Jia Jing, as their descendant, believed that he was not suitable to evaluate his ancestors. So, there were no inscriptions on these steles at first. The inscriptions we see today were written by the Qing emperors hundreds of years later asking government departments to protect this mausoleum. This building is the second gate of the mausoleum. In ancient Chinese architecture, although it is called a gate, it is more like a house, except that the front and rear walls are missing. In ancient times, only high-ranking figures could pass through this gate, and other staff could only enter through the small doors on the walls on both sides. In 1398, Zhu Yuanzhang passed away, and his grandson Zhu Yunwen ascended to the throne. The new emperor believed that his uncles controlled many troops and posed a significant threat to his power, so he decided to deprive them of their military power and persecuted many of his uncles. Zhu Di felt the situation was not good, so he took the initiative and led his troops to fight against the government. Three years later, he captured the capital city Nanjing and ascended the throne. Zhu Di was 42 years old at the time. His regnal name was Yong Le, therefore, he was also known as Emperor Yong Le. 
it is worth mentioning that Emperor Zhu Yunwen disappeared during the war, and his whereabouts have always been a mystery in Chinese history. Passing through this gate, we are at the second courtyard of the mausoleum. This building is the main hall of the mausoleum, where the tomb owner is worshipped. This main hall is the largest among the 13 mausoleums in the area. All the buildings we see in this mausoleum today were built 600 years ago and have only undergone minor repairs and the main structures remain the same. This architecture is a furnace. In the old days, people would burn offerings inside for the tomb owner to use in the afterlife. This was a common practice in ancient China. This main hall sits on a three-story platform with double eaves and a four-sided slope roof. This style is the highest level in ancient Chinese architecture and can only be seen in imperial buildings. Some public opinion at that time criticized Judy's method of obtaining the throne. For some complicated reasons, he did not stay in Nanjing for too long and soon returned to Beijing. After that, he designated Beijing as the capital city. Literally, Beijing means the capital in the north. The 60 pillars in this hall are made of very precious wood. Each pillar is more than 10 meters high and more than 1 meter in diameter. Such wood is scarce and takes more than 100 years to grow. This statue of Zhu Di was placed here only a few decades ago. In ancient times, there was a huge shrine in this hall, which contained the tomb owner's memorial tablet. During the reign of the Ming Dynasty, ceremonies were held here on the tomb owner's birthday, New Year, Winter Solstice, and other days. In 1407, Zhu Di's empress passed away. According to the burial customs of the Ming Dynasty, the emperor and empress were buried in the same tomb. Therefore, the construction work of the imperial mausoleum began in this year. Behind the main hall is the third gate of the mausoleum, and inside is the third courtyard, where the tomb is located. Since the emperor was still alive when the mausoleum was built, and Zhu Di was a very ambitious emperor, it is not surprising that the mausoleum is quite spectacular. By the way, the Forbidden City in Beijing was also built during this period. This architecture is called the Two Pillars Gate and is considered to be the boundary between the human world and the underworld. On this stone platform, there are five offerings carved from stone, an incense burner, a pair of faces, and a pair of candlesticks. As an emperor, once a military general, Zhu Di often led the army to attack the Mongolian nomads in the north. In 1424, Zhu Di died on his way back from the front line at the age of 64 and was buried in this tomb. This tower is the landmark building in front of the emperor's tomb. Through the arched doorway below, we can climb up this building. A tall tombstone is inside with the tomb owner's name written on it. Behind this building is a huge grave mound, and somewhere under the mound is the tomb chamber. The grave mound of this tomb is not open to tourists, but we can see it is enormous. 
the underground palace of this mausoleum, which took four years to build, has not been opened, and the tomb chamber remains intact, according to the results of underground remote sensing detection. The layout of the tomb chambers of these Ming Dynasty imperial tombs is similar. Therefore, we can see what this tomb chamber might look like through the Dingling Underground Palace, the only excavated tomb of the Ming Dynasty emperors. I will also leave the link to the Dingling Underground Palace video in the description. One difference is. That sacrificial burial was practiced in the early Ming Dynasty. The chosen concubines would be forced to hang themselves and then be buried in the tomb with the emperor. According to historical records, sixteen such concubines were buried in this mausoleum. In fact, in addition to the emperor, members of the imperial family. Also practiced this at the time, which has been verified by archaeological excavations. This practice was abolished during the reign of Zhu Qizhen, the sixth emperor of the Ming Dynasty, who was once captured by the Mongols. As I mentioned in the episode of Dingling Underground Palace, the coffin platforms in the two side halls were empty. Some people speculate that these platforms may have been where the coffins of the sacrificed concubines were placed, since the practice of human sacrifice had been abolished at that time. The coffin platforms were empty. As the first mausoleum of the Ming tombs in Beijing, Changling is the largest and best preserved. Although more than 600 years have passed, after earthquakes, lightning strikes, and wars, the buildings in the mausoleum are still standing, allowing us to glimpse that long-gone era vaguely.